he, uh, he played a bit of footy. He played with the Sturt Footy Club and uh, played a, a number of senior games there. Has coached the Pembroke Football Club as well in his time uh, from a footballing background. But of course his success came in tennis and he was one of the youngest players to ever uh, be drawn into the Australian Open. He reached the ranking of 192, sadly so had a lot of injuries throughout his career. He went on to coach, of course, again, as we all know, with great success with Leighton Hewitt. He then went on to coach Gail Monfils and now, of course, with Joe Wilfried Zonger. Um, some pretty big names there, and again, came from little old Adelaide, but to coach those sorts of characters and to be involved in sport like he has, he's got plenty to share with us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Roger Rashid, everyone. <laughs> when you're young, you're just playing a whole lot of sports, um, which is the way to go definitely, I think, for young kids because you just need them to sort of absorb every side of, side of their athleticism and just their mo major motor skills and not just be challenged in one area. But um, I actually didn't, uh, football was my love, and so I played football until uh, really until I was about 15, uh, until, sorry, not 15, uh, until I was almost 12. And the only reason I played tennis, we had a school tournament at uh, McGill Primary School where I went to school. And uh, I thought I'd enter it with my mates and uh, played, uh, picked up a tennis racket and played that tournament. And won it. when you're when you're a kid uh, and you win anything, you think it's pretty cool. So when you look back and think, well, what things do you think about from your junior coaches that really made a big impect on you and that you carry forward in your coaching philosophy? Rob used to pick me up every day um, at six o'clock in the morning. He used to come from Tea Tree Gully, drive past, pick me up every day at six o'clock in the morning with his son David in my year, um, and we would hit the tennis courts. Uh, at Pembroke for an hour and a half uh, before school every single morning. Uh, I went to Pembroke from year eight to year ten, and then I went, then I started travelling uh, on the tour. And um, so for three years straight, every single morning, if it rained, uh, he would still be there, and he'd get in his car, the heater would be on, and he'd be, you know, he'd be life of the party, and he'd go there and actually we'd do some physical stuff. And so massive influences for me because they, they actually put me on a, on a pathway to, to hopefully be a successful sportsman. One way or the other. If I'm looking at the if I'm looking at a, the elite kids at that age, and I'm talking so they're 12, 12 year olds, thirteen year olds, I really need to if they they love it. Most elite kids love it. They're very passionate. They're obsessed by it, whether it's footy or whatever sport they're playing, basketball, netball. They've, they become quite obsessive with it, um, and so then I think they then I think there's a role there for you to give them some real direction and and show them a way, show them a pathway. And so whether that's, and you can be um, in a good way, understanding their character, you've got to, you've got to make it fun but um, have a real line of direction because they actually want the message. Those, those kids at that age want a message, they follow the leader and they'll do anything if they believe in the leader. When you've got the other side of it where you've just got more the social aspect, more the club scene where you, you want mass participation, um, obviously a lot of the fun's really important, but also understand, I, I think personally, that fun is fun's important, but they also want to improve. They, just because they're not the best in their chosen field, it doesn't mean they don't want to get better. And it doesn't mean they won't follow direction, they don't want leadership, they actually do want direction, but they probably, you probably need to nurture it in another way. You need to actually, there's, they'll, they'll, need to, um, they'll need a lot more education coming from that, that group there because they need to feel like they're catching up to the elite, if you know what I mean. Um, they, don't, they, don't, they don't want to feel like they've been left behind. There's obviously the elite kids where you can actually do a little, you might do a little bit more with at certain times, but you've got to invest just as much time with the other guys because you never know when someone's going to make the transition from okay to your elite. So I think, you know, as I said, I think it's just about making them all feel like they're involved at the same level, knowing that you've got some of the elite kids where, where you might do some little stuff off the side, um, but never isolate, never isolate the packs. Because once you do that, the group that aren't up to speed with some of the better, better athletes, they will go home and say, Mum and Dad, I don't want to play this sport anymore. Pretty simple because they will see that, and it won't be because they don't love the sport, it's because the coaches are thinking of um, their best interest of result, potentially. We all want to win. I don't think you should not tell kids that the result isn't to win, because we actually, that's a real soft mechanism. It's saying we don't care. Like, we actually want to win and we'd like to win, but this is how we're going to go about it. So I think you need to, 
deal, that's, this is my opinion, Some, a lot of people would have different opinions to, the, to that and say, well, hang on, it's about participation. Well, it is, but it's about a positive participation as well, because we all like to be in a positive place. We all like positive results at the end of the day. So I would say keep, I, I think you must keep everyone alive. And I know that's putting everyone under the one umbrella, but the minute you close the door on, on kids, they will sense it and they will leave the sport. And it's pretty simple. And I think as coaches, we have a... First of all, I'd, I'd say for you guys doing what you're doing is fantastic. It's a credit to you all because it's, it's, not, it's not a... Uh, you don't get a lot of accolades. Uh, it's, not, it's not the high... You know, you're not getting a bucket load of money and it's not... You know, all that sort of... But not, money's not the big thing. I, I coach for free. Um, so I love it. But, you know, but, but you, know, you guys... We've got a right... We've got a... Um, our job is to actually keep kids involved in the sport as much as possible. See the kid that's not, not really enjoying it that much, or for whatever reason, find out why. Our job's to keep them involved. And the more we keep them involved, the more we have a chance to trigger them and actually become, you know, become better, better, at, better sports people. What's your approach to developing mental resilience, particularly in juniors? You can show them. I, because kids, kids love visualising, they love the visual. You know, we all, you know, as a kid now, we're all watching, we're watching sport on all the time, 24-7, everywhere. You know, we, we actually, we, we're inspired by the heroes. And so I think you need to show them the heroes. The one thing you do want to do as a coach, I think, is to, one, obviously at junior level, there's a lot of skill-based activity. Because without skills, you actually don't, the kid will, the kids, the children will eventually give up the sport because they'll find that their, their skill base doesn't increase then there's the guys that are actually might be doing, uh, guys and girls that are having private coaching, et cetera, et cetera, or a little bit more uh, gifted in some areas, so they actually keep moving away from the competition. The kids that don't have quite have the skills, they'll actually, they won't be, they'll see no improvement, and they'll feel like they're losing a bit too, too many times, especially in individual sports, and they'll actually leave the sport. So I think skill set's obviously the very first thing. And then, and then a lot of competition-based activities is, is crucial, because they, that's, that's the only way I feel that's the only way you can learn your craft because you then start decision making and actually deciding on how to play your sport under competition. You can't actually go from uh, one activity to really sort of um, sedate activity to competition and ask kids to become competitive. Because the ones, there's some that are naturally competitive, but they actually don't know how, some of them might not even know what that means. Well, what does that make? Do we just are we on the you know are we on the oval and the ball comes to us and we'll kick it or, or you know so I think I think you've got to engage competition in practice. When can you start saying you've got to focus, you've got to do the extras? I like hear stories about Lockie Woodfield, the young lad that's just been drafted number one at the GWS this year, and uh, his mum would get him up at six o'clock every morning to do his hour of core exercises every morning from the age of fourteen or fifteen. When can you start putting those sorts of demands on, on kids and, and when should you start looking at that sort of application? When a child comes to you and tells you that that's all I want to do at 12, you've got to let them sort of live that little dream because that's, he's obsessed by the actual sport, watching every tennis match, watching every night at Wimbledon, you know, the whole thing, like we all did, but so obsessed by it. So you, as a parent, you've just got to let them follow that path. Um, and I, and I think that's with any sport. If, if it, you know, you don't want it any younger, but, it, but I think if the kid, you know, if your child or comes up to you and says that I, I desperately want to be an AFL footballer, it doesn't mean he doesn't play any other sports. Like he played football as well as tennis, and he played any other sports. Basketball was going around, so he'd play. So he was, he was, multi, he was still multi-skilling himself, but his main purpose was tennis. So you don't, you don't want to just isolate your child from any other sport, but you'll lean them into that direction. So As a coach, what practical things can you do to instill self-belief in an athlete when they've lost their confidence? As a coach, your job's to be very upbeat. It's very positive. You could also be suffering the losses. Because it's not as tough as a coach getting having losses as well. Because you start, there's an element of, hey, am I doing the right thing? Are we doing enough? So you start. But if you, but if you're, if what you do on the practice court and off the court with a, with with kids, or and if I talk to the elite now, I'm late and, if everything we did replicated a real high performance gauge and level, um, I was always very sure of the pathway because I used to wake up, I still wake up, I wake up trying to be better than I was yesterday, trying to find a better ground for myself. So being very sure where I want to go 
and making sure that we do all that on the training track, that everything's ticked off. Because the last thing I ever wanted to do was the media and the media, they can do what they like and people can have their opinions of you and that's life, that's great. But the last thing I ever want to do is for anyone to say, well, they're not prepared or he's not prepared or he doesn't actually do his homework or he doesn't actually do, you know, I've heard they only do this or... So, not that everyone knew, not that people know what you do when you're in a sanctum, but I wanted to be so prepared within myself that I was actually was really comfortable with where we're at. The player then is very, what you'll find is they might not be having some results, but you need to give them a lot of positive feedback on all the indicators are suggesting that because you're doing all this, it turns around. And everybody has to go through moments where not much might be going on result-wise, but off the, on, the, on the practice court, your results are fantastic. So you can you need to you need to paint it with a different type of brush, and say that okay we we you know we'd like the match day court to be better but wow what you're doing on the practice court is so elite that that actually turns that turns around pretty quick, and in most cases you'll find if you can just buy some time like that with the athlete and really reinforce that, um, and you keep up there you actually sometimes the athlete's the leader as far as they might you might find there's some really big characters in your within your groups. But then there are times when you've got to become the leader of that athlete and be the character and take because they want something to actually just take them and keep them going. So, so I just think more as positive as you can be, but also letting them know that what they're doing is fantastic. When you talk about giving that feedback, what, what yeah. do you like to do? Uh, different different types. I mean, more on the elite level. Yes. Okay. Um, the elite level with uh, for late. If I if I just go th through the players like that. Um, Late night, I could show him more. I could show him a little bit of visual. I used to get, I used to get, I used to create a, a DVD every time of all Leighton's real positive forward movements. Um, so inside the baseline and forward, and what was, what outcomes they were to real high energy music. Um, and every now and then, I'll just slip it into it, slip it in part of our pregame, and and that was more at the start of an event, and a, a big event. He didn't. All he needed to know was. All he liked to feel that I, he, he liked to see that I was confident. So, most people, I think, you'll find that they're, they're either one or the other. They're actually people that like to watch, watch and see it, um, and then others like to be shown actually physically on the court. I think you need to find out what they see first, because what you and I will see will be completely different. Like what I see on the tennis court as a coach compared to what Joe sees, Joe Wolford's song of the kid. Completely different. He probably sees loud speakers, music. Uh, you know, <laughs> he's probably see, he's singing in a different space than I am. Uh, Layton and I saw it differently as well. I saw it very open and very go for it. Layton saw it very ma uh, mathematical, percentage orientated. Uh, so there's different. You've got to find out what they see first, and then decide on what element you can actually bring to the table to actually make them. Because at the end of the day, it's not about us. It's not about us. Um, it's about making them open up and use their assets. What little secrets, more tricks do you have for, for, for doing that to get athletes up and get them out of their headspace? Uh, that's the visual. That's when I think there's a real visual. That's when you can use video. Um, I think anyone who complains, you show them their own vision because it looks like shit. I mean, it's really terrible vision. And it's not, there's not, they can't actually, they would not embrace that vision. They would not, um, they would not like what, what they see on the court. So he's, he's about to get three and a half minutes of pretty awful vision. Um, and he won't like it at all. I mean, we had a good chat for half an hour in the, in the, in the car on the way back, him and I, but he's, he knows he's going to get this vision and it's pretty ugly. You know, when you have what's three and a half minutes of someone complaining and we come off uh, at that level. But it just closes you in and it, it gives you... So anyone who complains a lot, you just need to tell them that, hey, if you want to be great or you want to really improve and become really elite, the best never do it. That's just simple. You've got too much need. You can't concentrate on... For you, for shooting, you can't concentrate on your target and what's coming out, you know, your arms, and you're not going to have that relaxed mentality that you need to actually do your job. There's a good little app called uh, Coach's Eye, um, and Dartfish have another good one, but um, Dartfish has got a real good one as well, but there's not a simple one in Coach's Eye that you can download, it's pretty simple, and that's got all the slow, slow motion imagery, you can actually just flick it through on a, um, on, on a little, just with your finger on a slow motion, so it's, it's actually good just to capture um, every now and then. It's a big part of the stable, is for making sure they're happy. Um, I do it with Joe, and so I've got to understand his family. I've got to understand what makes him tick. Whether it's massive family uh, involvement, do they, does he not? They don't travel, but does it, how deep is he involved in the family? 
if everything's okay with his family. So he's, he's um, I've, I've sort of said, look, I'm, I'm coaching you, but you've got to have the full trust in me now I'm setting this job out. I'm here for you regardless. If it's the middle of the night and you need to talk to me, you need to knock on my door. If you've had a fight with your girlfriend and it's doing your head in, you have to knock on my door. Because if they're not, if they're not, if they don't feel at peace with their well, these are athletes, they shut down, they're done. You can just put them on hollows. Um, um, so it's all about making the athlete happy, essentially. I think you just got to be direct with your message and you've got to know what, you've got to know what you're selling. If you don't know what you're selling as a coach, you're in trouble. So if you guys are selling kids a message that you're not sure about, uh, they pick it up pretty quick. Go in, be strong with the message, really positive the message, bang, you got it. So as coaches, we need to sell. We're salespeople, but, in a, but we need to know what we're selling because kids are very, very quick to pick it up. Um, and you've got to remember what they're watching. They're watching TV full time. They're watching all these sports on TV. So they're hearing the experts who have played the game. So, you know, uh, so they're hearing all this and they're absorbing it all. They're watching, getting it on YouTube. They're getting a lot of stuff. So just know your stuff with them. Give it to them and they'll, uh, and, you know, they'll love it. My thing's all about do it if your performance of that day is high end and your performance the next day is high end. Not, not every day is going to be the same because you're just going to feel. You'll have days where you're, but as, as you, if you're trying to output at high end every time you walk on the practice court or, or in footy or whatever, and um, you will find that, forget the goal setting. You, your, your ambition might be to be there, but don't put it in your mind. We, we have an expectation of being top 10. We have an expectation of being very good in the majors and doing all things, but our biggest expectation for me is your day daily performance. Yeah, because that, that will that'll take care of the numbers. And, and and a lot of people, a lot of kids are scared of losing. They're scared, you know, that if there's fear. Or they feel, they're, there's a lot of fear of failure. My daughter has got an issue. No, she, she's better now, but when she was younger, she, she didn't do a little schools race for charity, running around an oval, because she stopped when they said they blew the gun. This was last year in reception because she she said, "Dad, what if I don't win?" I'm not looking at a girl. Like, okay, <laughs> just, you know, just, no, and I don't put I put zero expectation on anything. I, I've never said I just said I, I just said darling, but it's, I've always said darling, it's just great to just try your hardest, and that's, then you're winning. And so now she's getting it, and she's happy to play, and and she's actually letting me win sometimes because it was all about God. You better let her win, or she's gone. So so do you know what I mean? So it's all about performance based on the day.